the end. Heidi ho <laughs> Happy New Year, perverts. It's Tommy Purr with the first edition of Tommy Likes It, the talk show where I talk about toys that interest me and toys that I hope interest you in the new year of 2022. I hope you guys had a phenomenal New Year's. I hope you had a great Christmas. I know that I did. It was really relaxing and fun. Didn't get a whole lot of toys this year, but I got just enough to make some new content for you guys. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. We will go over those toys in the future in the next couple videos coming up in a few weeks. But today we are talking about the past. We are going to talk about the top 10 toys of 2021 in my personal collection. So the criteria for this list is that these toys had to have come out uh, during 2021 and I have to own them. And we're going to take a look at play sets. We're going to take a look at dolls and action figures. So it's kind of the cream of the crop and a nice variety. So let's go ahead and just kick off the list, shall we? Number 10 on our list is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Ultimates figure April O'Neil from Super 7. I waited the better part of a year for this figure and I'm really, really excited to have her. She's a great figure with a lot of really cool accessories that are a nice homage and throwback to the original April O'Neil from the 80s. However, the only reason why she didn't place higher is because the skin tone on the figure is really shiny. She looks like she's sweating almost. If they can just re-release the figure and fix that and maybe do her attire with the orange stripe and orange boots, um, that'll, that'll justify it enough for me to get a second April. I do, however, love the classic white boots with the blue stripe on the yellow jumpsuit. I do still love the figure. I think the head sculpts are amazing. I love all the accessories and I just love posing her. She's just so badass. I love her flashlight, her microphone, and especially her handgun that fits right into a camcorder so she can pull it out like James Bond. You know what I'm saying? I love that. I'm gonna be a supermodel. Number nine on the list is our first doll to hit Tommy Likes It's list. It is Cheryl Meyer from Series 3 of Rainbow High from MGA. Now, MGA is the company that creates uh, the Bratz dolls, and uh, you can kind of tell some of the aesthetic filters into uh, Rainbow High. And uh, I told myself I wouldn't fall down this rabbit hole with this doll line and start collecting them, but they just keep coming out with some really cute dolls with iconic outfits. And Cheryl Meyer is clearly an homage to Cher Horowitz, Alicia Silverstone's character in the movie Clueless, which is one of my top 10 favorite movies of all time. Ew, get off of me! Ugh, as if! So I had to get her. Thank you to my friends Holly and Thomas for picking up the doll for me when I couldn't find her at retail. I was so happy to have her and she sits proudly on my shelf and is definitely uh, not only my one of my top 10 toys of this last year, she's also just one of my top 10 dolls period in my collection. I absolutely adore her. Keeping up with the Rainbow High train, on number eight, we have the Walmart exclusive Slumber Party Robin Sterling. I absolutely love this doll. I think she's just so, so beautiful. She kind of edges out Cheryl because uh, my favorite color is blue, but I really, really especially love baby blues and teals. And so this just sets her over the top for me. She beats out Cheryl. Um, she's also got cute bunny slippers. She's got the fur trim pinois. Anyone who follows my wrestling career knows that I love me a good feather trimmed robe, uh, a la Ric Flair, Charlotte Flair. Uh, I love me a good uh, pinois, anything with like a fur trim. I am there. Um, anything that makes it look like I am shocked that my old husband has mysteriously died and left me all of his money. My husband was in that house. <laughs> I do love her sleeping bag. I love all the details on the doll. I think she's just super neat. I'm so glad I got her. Uh, she was $50 at retail which I think is super steep for that kind of doll. I think it should have been like 35 at the most, but whatever. I knew I had to pay that and get her right away um, from the website because as I knew, um, as I figured out or already surmised, the doll jumped up in price. She's now 80 to $90 on the second 
on the secondary market, uh, or she was $80 to $90 on Amazon last time I checked, and then on eBay a while ago, I saw her for like $110, $120. So, hey, I got her when she was at retail, and that's all I care about. Number seven, we've got four figures because there's so little. <laughs> but if I had to pick a favorite, a Number seven is our first horror figure to make the list, and actually it's four figures in one. Uh, obviously, uh, anyone who knows me knows that I love the killer doll trope in horror movies. Chucky, Tiffany, uh, uh, Annabelle, um, who else? Uh, the movie Dolls, uh, which was a precursor to this movie, one of my favorites of all time. Puppet Master. That's right, we're taking a look at the Puppet Master NECA figures. Uh, these are wonderful figures, they're so amazingly detailed. Uh, don't be confused by that photo with the trunk. I made the trunk. <laughs> you can't buy it um, unless you want to go to Hobby Lobby and get all the stuff yourself to make it. And if you do, I can tell you how to do that. Um, but yes, uh, we got Torch, Pinhead, Tunneler, and Blade. And in 2022, we are supposedly Gonna get Six Shooter, Jester, and Leech Woman. I can only hope, because I love those three puppets too. But all in all, these four figures are amazing. They're a nice throwback to the original Puppet Master figures that came out in the late 90s that I still own to this day. Uh, even Tunneler comes with uh, a little submachine gun and a pickaxe, just like his original figure did. Which makes no sense, because um, he didn't have those in the movies, but whatever. Um, if you haven't checked out Puppet Master, definitely check out the first five. The movies are campy, they're fun, they're creative. I uh, don't take them too seriously. Um, I love Charles Band as a creator because he just he just throws caution to the wind and he goes ape shit. I absolutely love it. <laughs> These figures are no different. They're fun to pose. They're very durable too, but they still come with some pointy edges that could break off really easily. So just be careful when you are uh, posing them, pulling them out of the package and playing with them. But overall, if I had to pick my favorite out of the four, surprisingly, it's gonna be Tunneler. He's not really one of my favorite puppets, but he is really fun to play with and pose and just just really, really neat to look at. So he's definitely my favorite out of the four so far. That is until we get Jester. I have a feeling Jester's gonna be my favorite because he's my favorite puppet, period. We've been waiting for you, Miss O'Neill. Am I behind on my Sony payments again? <laughs> Number six on the list is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ultimate April O'Neil from the 1990 movie by NECA. Uh, credit to Judith Hogue for signing over her likeness and making sure everyone got the opportunity to pre-order this figure. Uh, that was my main concern, especially with the, the, the movie Turtles, is that you can never find them at retail. So I was super happy when we were able to pre-order April because I absolutely love the April O'Neil character, no matter what iteration she is. I just think she's dope as hell. Uh, so I'm really happy to have her on my shelf, even though those double jointed knees are a bit hideous to look at. She comes with some great accessories like her purse, uh, Raphael's sigh, her microphone, and boxes and boxes and boxes of Smellio's frozen pizzas. That's a really nice touch there. Overall, the figure is amazing. It's got a great likeness to Judith Hogue, the actress, and it's got like spot on detail to her outfit from the movie. So if you don't have April, definitely try and track one down. She's definitely worth adding to your collection today. Number five was a figure that everyone was waiting for since frickin' February. So it was supposed to come out in February, and then it got pushed back to March, and then it got pushed back to July, then to August, and then September, and then we slowly started seeing it in like the end of September, early October. Um, thankfully, my friend Phil uh, in, in the Fig Cave group that I'm part of on Facebook found me, Jason, and sent it to me because I still have yet to see one in the wild here in Vegas, and it's now 2022. That's crazy, right? I do know for you Jason fans out there, Rogue Toys finally got their shipment in. That's how long we've been waiting. Like, they ordered these a long ass time ago, and the shipment just recently came in. So definitely check out their website and their stores and pick up yours today. But it's Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th part. Two hours later. Seven. <laughs> The New Blood. That's the one with Tina Shepard, who's like 
has the telekinesis and she's like Jean Grey meets Carrie White. But yeah, this is uh this figure is so amazing. It's got tremendous detail. It's got a shitload of accessories, which I put in a baggie and I can't find them anywhere, which just shows me that I need to go through my mountain of accessories and just sort them and label them because I can't find shit. And I'm already exhausted thinking about it. <laughs> the figure's great though. It's got the exposed spinal column in the back. It's got a great face mold underneath the mask. It's really fun to pose. And it's just got a whole bunch of new tooling that we have not seen from NECA before. So that's why it's number five on the top 10 list. <laughs> could beat Jason Voorhees for the number four spot? It's the queen of the dolls herself. It's Barbie. That's right. Mattel's Barbie Rewind doll. Career girl Barbie. Um, this year they released three 80s re rewind dolls. We have Career Girl, which is the one that made the list. And they also had a fitness one as well as a, uh, a doll's night out or a girl's night out. It's basically a, a rocker Barbie. Um, I was able to get those last two for $15 a piece on sale at walmart.com and they are arriving tomorrow and I am super stoked. I got this Career Girl doll for $30 when it was on sale um, originally. Um, she's She and the other two are usually $40 a piece so just be patient and you can get some really really good deals. But I love the doll. I love classic face Barbie. She's got the bend and snap legs. She's got the jointed elbows, the jointed wrists for dynamic posing. She's got the huge 80s brick cell phone, which I absolutely love. And she also has really, really, really nice clothes. They they really paid attention to detail and it's not made out of all the cheap stuff that the current like cheap Barbie dolls are wearing in the toy shelves, you know what I'm saying? So we, we keep it classy in this joint. Also the box is a giant VHS tape. Like you pull it out and it's a VHS tape inside of a slip cover. I kept the box. That just shows you how awesome it is. I never keep the boxes unless they are amazing like backdrops or play sets, but I kept it and you can actually see it like right above my head <laughs> in the background. And that's the one that we have for number four on the list, which just means next three toys are super fucking cool. Number three on our list is Sub-Zero from Mortal Kombat 3 from Storm Collectibles. An $80 figure that I did not want to spend $80 on, but he came with so many cool items. He comes with his fatality where he freezes you as an ice corpse and then he tears you in half and you explode into blood and body parts. He comes with the body parts. I had to get him. I had to, it was just amazing. Storm Collectibles is really good because the joints are like made out of butter. They, they move so well and so easily and you can get so many good dynamic poses from the figures. Uh, uh, the faces could use a little bit of work, but that's okay. I still love the figure. I think he's amazing, but I do implore you Storm Collectibles, Hurry the fuck up and make some girls from Mortal Kombat. I'm getting kind of tired of this. We always get the same fucking shit from Mortal Kombat. It's always Scorpion, Sub-Zero. Um, occasionally, we finally get a Johnny Cage. McFarlane, you're doing the same stuff. I need you to not. I need you to... This isn't like a feminist thing. This isn't like going, you know, equal rights for women, which, yes, yes. But Mortal Kombat has so many iconic females. We've gotten the ninjas before. But every time we start to get the girls is when, like, they just cancel the toy line. It's stupid. I need a Sonya, like a classic Mortal Kombat 3 Sonya blade. I need a Katana. I need Molina. I need a Sindel. Um, get on it. All of you fucking guys, get on this shit. That's all I'm going to say. Jade. I need a Jade. Come on. What are we waiting for? Speaking of women and women who sell and women who are toys that people are interested in buying, we are taking a look at number two on the list. And it's TB League's 112 scale Vampirella. This figure, holy hell. Again, I just, I was spending money on high dollar figures because I was like, if I'm going to buy it, it's going to be worth it. I've never had a Fison figure before. And a Fison figure, which is what Vampirella is, is basically the silicone body on 
a metal armature. And it's, it's silicone skin on a metal armature. So she's basically the Terminator underneath all the silicone skin. It feels so weird posing her because it feels like I'm handling a tiny human. It is crazy. Not only that, but they actually like come anatomically correct. She's got the little moldings for her nipples and she's got a molded vagina. It is so weird. Like I just thought like the ones that, that I had seen previously that were anatomically correct, like, there were some that were, and there were some that were like Barbie, where they just didn't have anything. No! Bro, she got a vagina! Like, it was weird. It was like, it was like some Indian in the cupboard bullshit, where I was like, is she alive? Is my toy alive? Hmm. Her face is beautiful, but it's hauntingly realistic. I, I, I feel like she is a living person in my toy hutch in the living room. And... She's great, but she's eerie. <laughs> she comes with a lot of really good accessories. She comes with a heavy ass base, which is fun to pose her on. Um, she is fun herself to pose. You can do a lot of sexy poses, a lot of fighting poses. You could really like just uh, get her into some positions that humans get into that a lot of action figures can't can't replicate. And it's amazing. Um, the only thing that I don't like about the figure is that because it's a silicone body, she does kind of attract dust. And it is kind of a bitch to like dust her and clean her off. But otherwise, what an amazing figure. I think it's the only one of that type that I'm gonna purchase. I really don't have an interest in having Fison figures because I'm just worried about them degrading and me losing money that I've invested in them. But I also like it just having her as like the special one. She's the only one of her kind on my toy shelf. And also it's fucking Vampirella. Come on, every horror fanatic has to have at least one Vampirella figure, okay? So, who beat out the living vampire with the molded vagina and the zombie hockey player with the exposed spine and uh, the career girl Barbie clad all in pink and the Lin Kuei ninja who comes with a whole shit ton of body parts and bones and blood? Who? or what could beat all those amazing figures and toys that we've had this year. I'll tell you what, it's not just a figure, it's a goddamn playset. Mattel's He-Man Masters of the Universe Origins Castle Grayskull. This thing retails $80. I picked it up at Walmart. Um, I was surprised that I found one at retail. Now you can find them more easily, which is really good because this set is amazing. I never had a Castle Grey Skull as a kid. Not because my parents didn't get me one or because I didn't want one. It was just kind of like, um, more so uh, He-Man was a little bit before my time. When I was born, it was all about Ninja Turtles. Um, so that was like kind of my focus as a kid was turtles. Uh, He-Man had kind of fallen by the wayside in popularity a little bit. Um, so I had everything turtles, like the Technodrome, the the sewer, all that fun stuff. But the Castle Grayskull, I mean, come on, it's iconic. It looks so cool. The way they did it is amazing. I loved putting it together. I even loved playing with it. And I did play with it a little bit. It kind of just sucks you in and just makes you feel like a kid. It just makes you have fun. It comes with the working elevator and the trap door and then the front security door. That's the mouth of the skull. How cool is that? And it also comes with an exclusive sorceress figure. Come on, come on. I, there was no way it wasn't gonna make number one on this list. I'd have to be crazy not to include it. So there you have it. The top 10 toys of 2021, according to Tommy Purr. And you have watched the first Tommy Likes It of 2022. Uh, as I said before, we got a lot of great stuff in the pipeline. I have a new Ginger Spice doll that just came in from my best friend, Laura, who sent it to me for Christmas. Um, Crystal, my boss from Rogue Toys, also got me a Ginger Spice doll in the Oriental mini dress, which I can't wait. So we're going to have a whole uh, Ginger Spice video going on there. Uh, Joey Mayberry from Ring the Bell got me a Francine figure from Legends of Wrestling line. Uh, really awesome. And we got some Masters of the Universe Origins figures to review as well, uh, which includes Mosquito, as well as uh, the actual painted single release of Sorceress. So lots of good stuff from the pipeline. Again, I've got those uh, uh, Barbie 80s rewinds coming. Those, ugh. those 80s rewind Barbies coming in the mail tomorrow. So 
you got a whole bunch of content that you guys get to watch in the future, and I'm excited to show off all of my new toys. Once again, you guys can follow me on Instagram at the underscore man underscore diva. You can follow me on Twitter at rare underscore form, R-A-W-R underscore form. And you can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com backslash officially perfect. And if you guys want to support me and my toy habit, uh, you know, got to just... Uh, gotta get some more toys. Uh, go ahead and pick up some of my merchandise that I designed myself at storefrontier.com backslash merchandise, P-U-R-R, chindice, like merchandise. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in and sticking with me uh, for the last year, two years, three years, however long I've been doing this damn show. I appreciate it tremendously. And here's to a brand new year and a whole shit ton of toys that we get to open together. Talk to you guys later. Bye.